like it's seven o'clock. So I will uh, call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone. A um, couple things before we get to regular business. Um, the first is I just wanted to recognize um, a couple of losses that the community had last week. Um, one is uh, Gordy Davis, who was a uh, served on the town highway department for over two decades. Um, he also uh, played an, an important role in the uh, fire department, was, uh, was a chief of the fire department for many, many years. And um, Gordy made many contributions to the community. And also uh, Leia Kil uh, Kilvadieva, Leia Kilvadieva, I've been practicing actually for the Good last job. hour how to say that, but um, her loss um, is huge. Is huge for the community. Uh, was Johnson's at community and economic co development coordinator for many years, and she made just countless significant contributions to the community. It was a really wonderful and generous person. Um, the town and village are working with Leah's family. Leah's family um, on an appropriate way to commemorate her. So there'll be more about that um, in the future. Um, also, if you're wondering why I'm talking and not Eric, Eric is joining us, uh, Eric Osgood's joining us by iPhone um, and um, didn't feel comfortable running the meeting without his full Zoom display in front of him. So he's asked me to, to chair the meeting tonight. Um, so we'll kick things off. Um, Brian or board members, Rosemary, do you have um, changes to make to the agenda tonight, additions or changes? Uh, let's see. I've got one request from the beautification committee uh, for an appointment that was recommended to us at our last meeting uh, for a member to that committee. Okay. Can we add the request for the three-year planning commission seat, or does that have to be worn for the meeting two weeks from now? Uh, I believe that, I, that that's one that we could take up if the board felt comfortable with it, uh, or we could take that one up when hopefully we've got, you know, two people ready to serve. Uh, but if the board, we received that one today by email, if the board would like to take it up today, they could. Uh, we ought to take it up next meeting. I mean, there, there's been... <laughs> Three letters of the board already. I don't see why we couldn't, but. Uh, Brian, how was that notice made? Was there a, uh, a deadline date for applicants to put in their uh, application for any of the offices and uh, committees we opened up? There wasn't because there were too many different positions to put okay. a firm date on you know, that applied to all of them, but was reasonably timely. Okay. Uh, so I just left, left a specific date off. Brian, our, our appointments policy that we adopted um, a couple of years ago stipulates that for, for the planning commission and, and offices that have statutory responsibility, we would advertise those in the news and citizen. Um, has that happened with this? Uh, it's into the news and citizen. Um, although uh, you're right, I believe that it's going to end up based on when it was submitted. I believe it's going to end up in this week's news and citizen, not last week's. Okay, so let's let's follow the, the book, um, the policy, and we'll, we'll do it next time. Okay. Um, others, um, other changes. I, I've got a request, uh, a hand up from a member of the public. Go ahead. All right, go ahead, Eric. Yeah, hey, uh, Brian, I had emailed uh, you on Thursday, March 11th with additions to this agenda uh, that didn't make an agenda. And then when we spoke again next, you said they would be added to the agenda in this phase of the meeting. Uh, it's something that we can bring up as a, a change to the agenda. Um, so Eric had sent me a request for the board to consider a few actions. 
Uh, Eric, you know them offhand, or do you want me to pull them up? Uh, I, I can drop them in the chat if you like. Uh, I've got the chat turned off, so uh, it is a motion. Well, I can. I, there's there's several motions, right? Uh, one of which um, is to about raising the Black Lives Matter banner on the municipal building and municipal property. Another is about um, uh, a strong recommendation for a replacement uh, to Mark Nielsen's slot on the Racial Justice Committee. Um, and then there was uh, actually two motions around the Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter banner and, and the appointment to the the new appointment to the racial justice committee to fill Mark's slot are the two are the essentially two and a half items that I requested to be added to the agenda. So, so let's do this because we do have Eric's report on the um, on the agenda. I'll ask you to uh, make those requests as part of your report, and the board can choose to uh, act on them as as they choose. Um, Okay, hearing no other changes. Um, review and approve the me minute, meeting minutes of March 3rd. So moved, Mr. Chairman. The motion to second. Ask, second from Eric. Uh, discussion. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Um, Rosemary, Treasurer's Report. What do you have for us? Okay, Brian, do you want to bring up the liquor licenses for Moogs? You want to do Moogs first? Okay. Yes, we should do the 2021 first. The 2020 before we do the 2021s. Yeah, good point. Matt? Yeah. Probably there should be some kind of a clarification read into the minutes of why 2020 is being done in 2021. Okay. Um, Rosemary, you want to explain that or do you want me to? Uh, you can explain it. Okay. Uh, so the due to COVID, and kind of the, the fluid nature early on of how to respond, how to provide for businesses uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, the uh, due dates for liquor licenses for 2020 were uh, extended, uh, suspended. Uh, they didn't really have a due date for the 2020 license. Um, as I understand it, I believe that they also don't have a due date for the 2021 license, but they're definitely going to have to get the 2020 license before they can get the 2021 license uh, to provide continuous service. So we're, we're receiving their 2020 license today, and we're also receiving their 2021 license that's contingent on having provided continuous service. Thank you. And two weeks ago, you'll recall, we, we approved the 2020 license for downtown Pizzeria, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Great. I make a motion to approve as presented. We have a motion, we have a, uh, Eric, is this for the 20, this is only for the 2020? Yes. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Second. That seconds discussion. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose. I trust that was with usual stipulations. Uh, yes, that's our uh, that's our practice. So I think right, but it wasn't mentioned. But it should be part of the record. 
All right. Well, we'll get in. We'll get another chance with the 2021 license. <laughs> that was just practice. <laughs> okay. So, uh, anything to mention on the 2021 license, Rosemary? It's the same as the year prior year. I don't think there's yeah. any changes. Do we want to do the 2021 license now? Do What's we want to uh, approve the slate or individually? Uh, the slate of, like, we only have one in front of us. Uh, Rosemary had a list of them, I believe. I'm the list. Yeah, they're, they're in another file because this one came in later in the afternoon. Oh. Okay. There's right. like five. Yep, uh, I'll pull the rest of them up. I guess I didn't see that one. It came in with a warrant, didn't it? No, I thought it was a separate. Was it? Hold on. It was fairly late in the day, though. There's not an attachment. It's at 326. Okay, yes, you're right. Uh, so I see that one. I don't have copies of their licenses to display, but I, we do have liquor licenses requested from Butternut Mountain Farms, Dollar General, Johnson Sterling Market, Jolly's, Sodexo, Maple Fields, and the River Valley Store. Okay. Thank Sodexo you. Sodexo is, um, is the college. Yes. Sodexo is the college. Um, and these are all identical licenses as we've had the previous year, correct? Yes. Okay, what's the board's pleasure? I would make a motion that we approve the slate and uh, send along the usual letter. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. We have a second, discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Very good, thank you. Anything else? What else do we have, uh, Rosemary? Yeah, you guys will have to come in and sign those licenses before I can send them to the state. Yeah. And the only thing I had is just the budget status report. And to date for um, nine months, we're at 55.08% spent of budget. And income is at 91%. In April, I'll get a, um, a true up for the school taxes, which will adjust our current tax figure, which should bring it closer to 100%. Is that typical, Rosemary, that we're at 55% of spend? Yes because it all depending on how bad mud season is. Right now we're, look, we're in pretty good shape, but if we have a bad mud season, that could change it drastically. Okay, thanks. Hopefully it won't warm up too fast. Rosemary, I saw two separate charges for salt. Were that two separate deliveries? They were both yes. around 1500, okay. Yeah, two separate deliveries. Anything else, Rosemary? That's all I had. And you just need to come in and sign the warrant when you sign the liquor licenses. Do we plan on having a tax sale this year, Rosemary? Probably later in the year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Rosemary. You're welcome. Um, okay. Uh, next up on the agenda is the racial Justice Committee report. Um, so we'll hear from Eric Hutchins. Thanks, thanks for being here, Eric. Yeah, thanks for having me. And then I'd like to start off by welcoming the uh, two new members to the select board. I think they'll both do an excellent job representing citizens of the town. So Beth and Evan, thanks for sir, 
serving your communities. Um, so I was a little surprised when I forwarded some items to Brian to consider on the agenda that then I would be giving a report. It was not what I intended. Um, uh, but I can tell you, you know, I don't think we've really formally kind of registered with the select board since the formation of the committee. Um, it's been a bit of a clumsy start, I think, for the Rich Justice Committee in that we've already lost two of our six members and are seeking uh, another appointment tonight. Um, and there have been some differing opinions and awareness about open meeting law and how often we should meet and agendas and some technology issues. Um, but I think we're starting to get our feet underneath us. And uh, we're also finding some you know, challenges with everything we do having to be both approved by the select board and the village trustees. You know, Luckily after the town meeting vote and the, the imminent merger of the select board in the town, I'm sure we, we won't have that problem soon, right folks? Um, uh, so, um, but you, you know, we were, we were struggling because, you know, there's, there was, I think, believe five different purposes that were outlined by the select board and the trustees for, for the Rich Justice Committee and dividing our energies up among those different ideas has been a little bit challenging. Um, but I think, you know, we're starting off with some ideas around messaging uh, and uh, hopefully soon education um, and outreach for what we can do. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to, to answer any questions folks might have. I, I think we've done a lot of, you know, soul searching among the people who show up to the group about the importance of this work and that, you know, I, I want everyone on the select board and in the town to understand that I think everyone who's involved really thinks it's, it's really important, you know, like morally and ethically to be an inclusive and welcoming town that makes a, a very clear message that we stand for racial justice and treating everybody with equality or even equity. Um, but also that, you know, there's a real economic incentive here as well. Um, if, you know, the population growth in our state over the last 10 years, the white population in the state has declined by 1% over the last 10 years. Um, but brown and black people have made up the majority of population gains in our state. And I remember Governor Scott's uh, 2018 inaugural address where he discussed at great length how demographic changes were going to hurt our state. And we needed more younger families and young people to stay in the state. And those people are largely going to be people of color. And it is a matter of the survival of this town economically and culturally that we make ourselves open and welcome and are, are, uh, um, show ourselves to be inclusive, not just in word, but indeed to people from different cultures who look different than uh, the mostly white folks live in this town. Um, so there are two motions that we passed at our last meeting. One was to ask the board uh, to approve the posting of a Black Lives Matter banner on the municipal building or near it. Um, and then the other, uh, should, we, should I state these one at a time and we'll deal with one at a time or should you hear them both first? Uh, I'm sorry. I'd ask you oh, sorry, go ahead, Matt. I would ask that maybe you can put all of your recommendations out for us and, um, and we can. So I'd say the three things that I would say is one, I'm here to answer any questions about the work of this committee or take any advice or feedback from the board. Uh, two, there is a motion to post a Black Lives Matter banner on the municipal building. Uh, and then three, that we, the board made a strong recommendation to advocate for the appointment of Sophia Berard to, the, to replace Mark Nielsen's spot on the Racial Justice Committee. And I can speak to each of those in turn if you like. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that um, back a couple of months ago, Rick Opperly um, came representing the Racial Justice Committee, made a couple of other recommendations as well. Um, and I don't have them right in front of me. I'm wondering if Eric, you know what those are or anyone, because I he didn't have, he wasn't on the agenda for the night. He, we allowed him time to speak, but um, so we didn't take up his his recommendations that night. 
Yeah, I, I, I can find those real quick. I know one of them was about the Black Lives Matter flag, which has in fact been uh, undertaken and there is that flag is now flying. Um, the other one, I... There was one about the inclusivity statement, I believe, taking more prominence. Yeah, and this, yeah, and this is this is one that that um, I believe is coming with the trustees. More importantly, um, that the town of Johnson and the village trustees add the Johnson inclusivity statement prominently to the website and add it whenever possible to town communications, publications, and advertisements. Uh, advertisements. The motion was passed, and so this is something that was brought up at the trustees meeting, and I believe. Um, Meredith said something to the effect of, well, if the, if the board of the trustees directs employees to undertake this work, they would do it. And so I think we have something on the agenda along the lines of, you know, the advisement to put the inclusivity statement and the anti-racism statement on the website, on the literature is one that was made. And then what, you know, I, I don't know how direct an action the board and the trustees need to take in order to make that a reality. Um, but that, I, I, I don't have the exact quote from Meredith, but I believe it was to the effect of um, pulling this up. I think I have it. Yeah, here we go. No, that's not it. I'm sorry, you're catching me a little flat-footed here. I apologize, and uh, uh, Bill, um, it, we can take that up, uh, you know, at another meeting as well. Um, okay, thank you, Eric. Um, uh, I'll turn it over to the board for comments, or what? How would you like to proceed on these? Um, two, or, two or three recommendations from the Racial Justice Committee. Eric. Yeah, I'll, I'll just raise my hand because I can't see other people, so I'm not sure who you're going to recognize, but uh, I think maybe for Eric and the Racial Justice Committee, one thing that the select board was looking for was, and that may be why it got shown as a report, was a, a monthly update, just similar to what the Planning Commission does or some other committees occasionally uh, give you four or five minutes just to give us a report, you know, just where you, you're going, the direction you're heading, and just keep us in the loop so we know where you're going and that way uh, it doesn't blindside anybody. Yeah, uh, that, that was the, the case. And Eric, I really appreciate you stepping up and, and providing a report in this way, even though it wasn't exactly what you thought you were signing up for. Um, but it, it'll, it's very helpful uh, to have better communication uh, between the select board and the Racial Justice Committee. Uh, so we hope we can, uh, you or somebody else from the, the Racial Justice Committee, keep coming back on a regular basis so that we're all on the same page and and up to up to date other comments from the select board Beth. Yep. um so i have a couple of questions and comments uh thanks eric for representing the committee um my first comment is i think that um in terms of these items we should put them on an agenda to talk about whether or not we want to um, rather than just a report, but have it actively on agenda, what the items are, that the recommendations are, so other folks in the community can see them and weigh in if they'd like. Um, the other thing that I just want to throw out there is um, one thing that's very much on my mind is how um, our town policies and town procedures and things like that are um, written and established, um, both for racial equity, but all other types of equity too, because there are many types. And I'm curious if the committee has discussed um, review of any of those types of things, such as ordinances or policies, because um, I think that that is something that it's tough, right, when you're talking about training and trying to 
change perspective of folks. Like that's something that individuals have to choose to do. Um, but there are, I think, some pretty um, actionable items that could be done if we look at um, bias language that, you know, the nature of bias isn't that you understand that you're being biased in the moment, it's that you don't understand that or don't see it. So I'm just wondering if there are some, you know, very actionable items that could be looked at and um, come out of the committee, you know, the committee having some guidance for us, I guess, in um, looking at some of those things. Yeah, so I would say of the, of the different, you know, principles laid out for this committee, one of them was policy recommendations. And I think we figured that one was a little further down the line. And that said, like I was in charge of researching a bunch of that stuff. And, you know, one of the things that I came up with, which I thought was interesting was, um, I think it, the town of Hartford, I believe it was, did a kind of um, um, a bias inventory, right? Where they had uh, a kind of a, a self inventory checklist for employees and departments to be like, do we do this? Do we do this? Do we do this? Is this part of our plan? Um, I can certainly link it to everybody, uh, you know, and forward it to Brian if he wants to share. But, you know, I, I thought that was a little ways down the line, you know, that we would get kind of messaging and education, I think, are the things people are looking to do up front. Um, but certainly there's policy stuff we could do where we could just kind of, you know, do a self inventory of like, is there stuff that we're doing that's turning people away or that's having a negative impact? Um, and another one I think is, is outreach um, in that asking for feedback um, about what we do in our town that makes people feel welcome and what we do that makes people not feel welcome and to see if we can impact that in any way through education or policy. But that's a good question, and, and I'll certainly bring up that that kind of self audit. I think it was called tool that that, that the town of Hartford used, and I think Brattleboro did something similar. Um, I'll I'll pop that. Uh, we lost audio with you, Eric. Like we got most of it. Yeah, I think he cut himself off and muted just a second too quick, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I would just say that 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 policy, that self audit stuff, uh, I would pop, we pop that back up to the front of the queue, uh, and maybe provide something at the next meeting. Okay. Anything else from the board member uh, from the board um, for Eric? Uh, Eric. Eric Osgood. Oh. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, maybe address something that Beth brought up. And I, I think she uh, might be correct that the, uh, the request from the Racial Justice Committee are actionable items. And to be in full compliance with uh, the open meeting law, they probably should stand alone on the agenda so that there are community members that could see it and participate and attend if they felt uh, you know they wanted to. And that's, Part of the reason for the open meeting law and the transparency requirements is is not to do something um, under the covers that they didn't know was going to happen. So I, I think that Beth's right on. That should be a stand on its own agenda item for a future meeting. Those requests. I echo that also. Was there more that you wanted to say, Mike? I was just going to tell Eric. Uh, uh, Hutchins that it was kind of a stretch for the inevitable merger of the town and the village. <laughs> <laughs> How many years has Essex been doing this? 20? You know, uh, so it's uh, Rome certainly was not built in a day and this merger is not going to be done uh, tomorrow. So I think you know that, Eric, and you were just kind of kidding us. Yeah, I was just joking on that. Um, I, I think that Beth and Eric's suggestion to, to put um, actionable items for the Racial Justice Committee on the agenda for the next meeting is a good one. H however, I, I would ask the board to take up our, our motion to uh, appoint Sophia Berard to the Racial Justice Committee. Um, uh, she, you know, she's been at every single one of the meetings and has participated in a couple with as many good ideas as anyone 
who was on the committee, a committee she applied to be on at the first round and was denied the opportunity. And, and pretty much everybody in the meetings thinks that she'd be a wonderful addition. So that is a, that is a request I would ask you to take up at this meeting. Um, uh, but I, I will be sure to, after our next meeting, clearly present uh, items we would like on the agenda uh, for the following meeting and, and, and clean them up a little bit so there can be proper warning and discussion. Thank you, Eric. What's the board's pleasure, uh, Eric Osgood? Well, I just uh, thank you for that, Eric, and, and the Sophia recommendation. Um, and I'm certainly not against Sophia. I think she could be a, a, an excellent candidate. Normally our process is, and we have a, a policy of this, if it's a town organization, committee, board, et cetera, we do look for input from that committee on a replacement for a, a, a position open. Um, if it's a committee or a board that's outside of Johnson, such as uh, the Solid Waste District or the LCPC, we do not uh, expect or solicit input from them on who should be there in representing our town. We decide who represents our town. And saying all of that, the, the racial justice is sort of unique in that uh, it's half town representation and half village. Um, so I'm not sure if it's really uh, appropriate for the village to have a say in who we as a town have represent, representing us. Um, maybe the board would consider soliciting the input from the two left uh, town representatives on who they would like to see. But um, I don't know if I feel quite comfortable with having village uh, folks telling the town who should represent the town. Eric Cutchins, you have your hand up. Yeah, the, the recommendation to appoint Sophia Barrar was made unanimously by the Racial Justice Committee. That is the two extant members of the town and the three members of the village. Thank you, Eric. Mike? We have two other people that are interested in the job. So wouldn't we normally go through a interview process for that? But it depends. We don't have a, we're not required to um, interview other candidates. The, 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 their board is not required to, but they would have that opportunity. Uh, I know Anne-Marie Barr had submitted uh, a request right away and I had forwarded that to Rick Opperly. And then just today we got another request whose name escapes me um, that obviously the, the committee has not had any opportunity to, to meet with the person we heard from today. Well, in the past we have had interviews with multiple candidates and I don't think we should change what we've done in the past. Jane Spence. Hi, yes, thanks. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, it, it's important that, you know, all of the people who have put their names forward get a chance to, uh, whether it's with the select board or with the racial justice committee, uh, get a chance to, you know, speak their piece and say why they think they would be a good addition to the committee. Uh, and I also think it's important um, as far as open meeting law goes, I'm, I could be wrong about this, but I think uh, in most previous circumstances I've seen where the board has filled positions, there has been a firm deadline of get your applications in by X date. And then the process starts of figuring out who among those applicants would be appointed. Uh, so I think you know, this might not be because of open meeting law, but I do think it's important to follow that precedent that uh, has been set before and, you know, set a deadline, say this is the last day we'll take any applications and then move on from there. So thank you. Thank you, Shane. Do other board members want to chime in on this at this point? Okay, so- I feel like we should hear, if there are multiple parties interested, we should hear from those parties. I wasn't aware there were other interested parties. Um, okay, so what I'm hearing is we'll, we'll um, 
we've heard the recommendation from the Racial Justice Committee and that um, I'm not hearing a motion for us to act on that tonight. Um, Eric Hutchins, go ahead, please. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you all do what you're gonna do, but I would say that Sophia has been at all the meetings and I don't know that any of the names you're bringing up have attended any of the meetings. And I, I think that's, I think that that speaks volumes and that we really, we need bodies in here uh, to, to do the work. And she's demonstrated that ability. It's a subcommittee. It doesn't have any actual power. We can't do anything. So with regard to open meeting law, the, the remedy, the cure for us appointing someone without notice would be to, uh, you know, address any of the actions we've taken and we don't take the actions. We make recommendations to the select board. So there's, there's no, there's no, there's no harm done in appointing someone now, but, but you got, that's just my two cents. You, we had a uni, unanimous recommendation from the current committee of a person who's been to every meeting and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Appreciate that, Eric. Thank you. Um, Kyle, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Um, you're doing a great job, Nat, and I, I, I see a potential future here. <laughs> um, I was just going to say that um, I would disagree with Mike um, that on the fact what he claimed that we always have had inter you know that we the board interviewed candidates for different committees. My recollection is that we would um, see at most the, the the letter of intent, and then the committee itself would make a strong recommendation after they discussed it to the board, and then. We almost always, you know, um, uh, yielded to, you know, the committee because they they've they've been thinking about it and they know best, so to speak. So, um, so I would disagree with that. That that's been our procedure always in the past. Um, and I will just, yeah, echo what Eric said because I've been to every racial justice committee meeting as well. <laughs> And Sophie has been there and she has participated and she has interviewed twice now and is clearly incredibly committed. So why this is just to me a, yeah. Um, and, and appointing her is just a really natural and, and right course of action. So I would, I would um, support that. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Now, now I have to disagree with uh, Kyle. Usually uh, they would be only one person uh, that any particular committee uh, would say. And so we have three people this time around. I think, I think it's just a little bit different. Uh, okay. I, I could see one, if there was only one candidate, then by all means, but we have two more. So I, I, uh, I don't think it's fair to the other two people. I have a question from Cal. Welcome, Cal. Yeah, thanks, gang. Um, I again, I would uh, I would want to um, support Sophie being put in uh, for the Racial Justice Committee uh, and echo what Kyle said. Um, and now I lost my train of thought. Um, I would say, uh, okay, I would say if people uh, had a, a vested interest in being the Racial Justice Committee, they would have been showing up to the meetings um, as Sophie has. And uh, the folks who have, you know, not to diss the folks who have shown interest in that, I think that's a great thing. And I would encourage the folks who have, uh, besides Sophie, who have shown interest to show up, up at some Racial Justice Committee meetings and see what's going on first. Um, so that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Cal. Excuse me, Cal. Um, okay, um, we're starting to butt up against time here. Um, so again, I'll, I'll ask uh, the board if they have anything that they want to contribute. We do have one more comment, but hopefully we can move things along here. Anything from the board? Okay. Um, go ahead, Shane. Yes, thanks, Nat. Uh, I would just like to say, I know there are people who are very committed to these issues who don't know when or where the Racial Justice Committee meetings are. So um, I think it's unfortunate that 
you know, maybe people don't know how to attend the meetings. Uh, and that is hopefully something that can be addressed going forward. But, uh, you know, there are people who are committed who don't even know how to attend. So thank you. Thank you, Shane. And it looks like final Thanks, comment, Eric Hutchins is going to uh, tell us when, when and where the Racial Justice Committee meetings are, perhaps. Eric? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Shane. It, it was on our agenda last time that we are going to post on Front Porch Forum, uh, put in the calendar of the News and Citizen uh, on the town and village Facebook pages. Like we were aware that there was some attendance at the meetings, but not as much as we would like. So uh, that's going to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And, and thanks for, the, for your report today. And uh, the conversation will continue. I, I, I'll say, um, that um, you know, we we did appoint, we did create, put a lot of effort in, in creating this committee, and I, I hope that the select board will um, just really take the recommendations very seriously and and uh, consider them closely. I think they're doing good work. Um, so, uh, moving on. Uh, are we going into the public works report at this point, Brian? Yep, that's what I've got. Okay, great. Uh, I think I saw Hugh here. Hugh, our public works yep. supervisor, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hello, how are you? Good. Um, <clears throat> my internet's been really shaky tonight, so let's see how this goes. Um, I, I don't know if Eric sent that uh, report out. I didn't get it to him until today. I got it late this afternoon. Yep. I've got it here. So give me a second and I'll put it up on the screen for uh, everyone else to be able to follow along. Okay, you can see that now? All right. Yep. So we've spent the last month, there's been quite a bit of plowing done but on top of that uh, we've been continuing to grade the roads as we can um, that first warm-up i noticed that pretty much all the roads are were down to bare ground so we were able to remove an inch and a half or more of ice so that should help hopefully mitigate the some of the mud we experience um, but it all depends on what the weather does moving forward it looks like the weather next week is going to be a gradual warm up. It's still getting cold at night. So hopefully that'll help, but things have held together pretty well so far. <clears throat> um, the, hang on a second. can you scroll up, back up, Brian, there you go. Um, <clears throat> started doing some more maintenance. Uh, the grader had some wear items that really needed to be fixed. So, we had Rick LaHoulier come in who has a bit more knowledge um, of some of the finer aspects of that machine. And he was able to help our guys um, just replace a few parts to get it back into tip top shape. Um, apparently the guys used to tow this York rake around with the pickup. Um, I decided that was not the best use of that truck. So we made the York rake attachment that we have work on our tractor that we acquired last year. I'm trying to get more use out of some of these items that we that we already have. So we adjusted that to fit on that. And uh, this disc attachment that we have, we got that ready to go for spring grading. Um, in the past month, we've been called out, I would say four, maybe five times overnight uh, for trees down. We've been having a lot of wind storms and whatnot. So that's been keeping the guys busy. Uh, we posted the roads on 311. And uh, I didn't realize how many loggers we have in town until I put those signs up. They have called me nonstop wanting to <laughs> get on the roads. And, and that's just the honest ones. You know, I'm sure other folks aren't even paying attention to it. But uh, we did get that out there. And uh, hopefully that'll help cut down on some of the damage. But, uh, and then I just threw a ultra exciting picture up of a, uh, of one of the areas we cover where we've 
push the snow banks way up and out. Um, there's a lot of drifts that come through there. Sometimes that'll be four or five feet tall. So that's just one thing that we've had one of our guys out there doing. So that's uh, all I have for my report. Well, Something we talked about, Hugh, that I'd like to update the board about was the, um, you know, that we're updating the security system at the mm. town garage, uh, that yep. the system we have is in poor shape and uh, we can't get proper support for it anymore. Uh, so right. we're in the process of replacing that with a more modern security system. Yep. <clears throat> yep. That's uh, something we can monitor. Uh, I can monitor it from my phone. Um, it's just the old system hadn't worked uh, since I started and I see enough questionable characters uh, around uh, at two in the morning or at two in the afternoon. <laughs> Um, I felt it best to have a functioning system. We have a lot of tools and whatnot. Thank you. Anything from the board? Great job, Hugh. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hugh. Public comment for Hugh? Got yes. A public comment? Uh, Greg, welcome, go ahead. Hey, Hugh, I like your idea of grading there in the winter time. Um, I'm not sure I've seen that too much, but I'll tell you, it took some of the ruts out of the roads and the potholes and uh, made it a lot safer. And I think it actually uh, was uh, helped keep the sand on the road better. So that was, a, I was, I was impressed with that. And I, I'm kind of excited to see how uh, the roads will turn out this spring, you know, without all that water and ice adding to the mud on top. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. So great. To, that was pretty good work right there. Uh, can people haul their logs out on a cold morning uh, here or are you permanently just down? Say it's like this morning. Would you let a truck on their own? That, and that's my last question. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We've been, people will call me. I'll look at the weather and see uh, if they're going to be able to shoot in there first thing in the morning. Um, what I, I've been gathering from a lot of the loggers is there's a shortage of log trucks right now. So everybody's using one or two guys and those guys are booked pretty solid. I'd, it's been, uh, it's a case by case, you know, I kind of know what each road's doing. I know where most of these guys are. Um, I've allowed most of them to go out early in the morning, but as things progress, you know, it's going to start warming up and we're not going to get that night free. So they're going to have to, they're going to have to wait. All right. Thanks, Greg. Any other questions, uh, comments? Um, okay. Thanks very much, Hugh. Thanks, Hugh. Um, Okay, so we're going into the administrator's report now. Is that correct, Brian? Yep. And first up, we have um, some um, a request from the uh, food shelf for a couple of improvements to the old mill house. And I believe Dorgan is here to um, sort of explain what is being requested. And uh, oh, okay, there, there you are, Dorgan. So yeah, uh, we've got. Uh, request for two improvements. So we'll take these kind of one at a time, uh, talking about the, the ramp first. So thank you, Dorgan. Can you describe the, uh, the ramp for us? Yeah, well, yes, I, I hope so. Um, as you may well know, there's a picture with your materials of the food shelf steps. There are three steps going up and um, people who want to use the food shelf who are in a wheelchair, there you are, um, can't uh, obviously get up to us um, or anyone else who wants to access the building. So we would like a, a handicapped accessible ramp. Um, and um, I put that thing about the ice buildup because it's a chronic issue with water dripping from the roof 
onto the steps to the left there um, and ice building up. And um, so part of the bid I had asked from Eric Sorensen was to address that issue because if we have a ramp, then we're really dependent on the, the, uh, the three feet to the left of um, those st steps. Um, I mean, people could walk up the ramp, of course, but we would like to address that ice situation. So that's part of the bid. I presented uh, to the trustees last week and they um, okayed the uh, ramp and as well as the tearing out of the counter inside, which we'll talk about next, I guess. Um, but they wanted three bids. So I have asked two other people to submit bids at this point. You, I mean, if there are questions, it's pretty straightforward, I think. Um, so, would the board like to hear both renovations or do you want to act on them one at a time? I, I have a question for Go ahead, Mike. Uh, last, uh, when you had that meeting with the uh, trustees, I happened to zoom in on that. You said that you were just going to have a ramp and, and no more steps. Was, is that what I heard? And you were going to use just the ramp as uh, access and egress to the building? No, no. Uh, it will be as the picture is, in which the okay. ramp takes up four feet of the steps. Then okay. we have the steps to the left. Right. But there was some talk, as I recall, and uh, probably it didn't last very long. It said you could use it. It was a joke. Everything. Actually, oh. it was humorous that because um, they were referring to the steps that are would be available as the place where pedestrians could go and i just made the comment that pedestrians could of course walk up the ramp okay well, well. i'm a, I, I probably missed a little bit of that and uh, i understand fully now what you're talking about thank you i have a question that go ahead um hi i don't know that we've met hi dorgan um I'm curious if the, I know that building quite well. I've spent a lot of time in that building um, between REC and when REC was there and Boy Scouts, when Boy Scouts was there. Um, and I'm curious if the doorways are also ADA compliant or is this access just to the deck? Um, well, it's, um, that's a good point. I don't know the answer to that. And um, there is a small, um, you know, step, which I hadn't thought about until you just brought it up, um, at the base of the door as you go in. So I don't know the answer to your question, but it's certainly worth thinking about. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, there, there's a couple doors that swing into the same area right there. So that might be a problem too. Um, We'll have to investigate that a little bit more, but uh, if I can speak on this, I think that this would, we, you've, correct me if I'm wrong, Dorgan, but I believe that you've done delivery to the porch before, like in the, uh, during COVID when you weren't allowing people indoors. Uh, so I think that this would still be a useful improvement for the, the food shelf, even if it might not allow interior access. Yes, that's true. In the in the summer, we had the t uh, table outside, and we would serve people on the porch. Um, we put the produce out there and the bread, so they could select themselves, and then we brought out boxes and whatever they wanted from inside. Now, people come into the entryway, and we have a table with a big sneeze guard um, where they stand behind that, and we uh, wait on them there, and we have things in the in the entryway there it's a little crowded it's far from ideal but trying to keep everybody safe the other thing that i'm just curious about is um when i look at the roof there's a couple of things that just come to mind one is that um i totally remember and can appreciate the ice buildup the ice buildup is really bad right there um I can't help but think insulation is probably the biggest offender to that ice buildup as opposed to dripping water because the water wouldn't be dripping if there's more insulation. Um, but also just where the roof 
is right now and where the angle of the roof is, if you built it out further, it looks like it may impede the floodlight system. And I'm just curious, I just think that when you go out to bid and get some estimates on this, um, it could be more than you are thinking initially, I guess is kind of what's running through my mind. I'm sorry, Dorgan, we can't hear you. Can you speak up? Um, well, I would, that's what I wanted to see was the top. And um, I don't know, maybe the floodlight would have to be moved. I think Eric Sorensen thought he could put an 18 inch um, extension on that roof um, and solve the water build up. I don't know that that would block the light. We'd have to look at that. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, other comments, questions from the board? I don't hear any, we'll go to uh, Eric Carol. has a stand up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Eric, hey, Matt. Uh, I just gonna question, what are we looking at? As I understand it, you've gotten one bid and there's now you're soliciting for two more. Um, is this something we could take action on tonight or is this something you're gonna come back to us with a proposal? I guess the question is to Dorgan. We've lost her audio again. Um, can you hear me? Am I yeah, here? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, okay. Um, well, the trustees, um, they voted in favor of doing it um, asked for two other bids so I would come back to them and they would choose a bid. Uh, the bid at this point that Eric did was for $3,000. I guess would be split between the town and the village. Um, I met with Brian and I'm sorry, Brian, I can't pronounce your last name, but he, he had some concerns that the 12 feet that Eric had suggested for the length of the ramp, which would it to be in compliance with ADA has to be, um, would accommodate a one foot rise. Um, and the rise is greater than a foot. So Ryan was concerned when he looked at it that it might have to be a longer ramp or would have to be a ramp that went into the porch actually for some of its run. Um, so you'd have to cut down the porch. Um, or make a turn with the ramp um, because it would be too long. Be, or the alternative was to build up the parking area. So there may be some other wrinkles um, that Eric didn't um, consider. I haven't gone back to him to ask why he thought 12 feet would be adequate. Um, okay. And, okay. Brian is here to provide comment if he if we're, I think so, but Charles has had, had his hand up. So let's, let's go to Charles. Good, so I see you Brian, I'll call on you after we speak to Charles. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Charles. Okay, I just unmuted. Um, two questions, yeah, the ADA requires uh, 12 feet of run for every foot of rise. But I'm curious, is four feet width, is that ADA compliant? I thought it was five feet. No, I looked it up. Okay. It's actually, it is compliant. It's actually 36 inches. I think the landing, the where people might turn, like on a landing, has to be brought wider. 36 inches. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Okay, Brian, uh, thank you for waiting. Go ahead. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I took my laser to it and I got 28 inches of, uh, of rise. So that we're talking about a pretty big ramp. Um, you're coming 14 feet out, probably turning on like a four foot platform and then shooting past that apple tree and you're almost towards the road. You know, so it's a big ramp. Uh, I think it's a pretty big expense. I think Eric's right with that roof. I think that you could throw something on there. It's not like... Um, it's the prettiest building, you know, and that was kind of my biggest concern for the select board is 
in the I guess for the village trustees is is there a plan for this building beyond slapping a ramp on it to make it ADA compliant? It it's hard for someone like me to throw a number and a bid to build onto something like this as a town voter and taxpayer um, and not sort of see it without a, a full vision. You know, it's um, unfortunate that we have to use this building. I think it's beautiful, but clearly nobody's given a damn about it for a long time. You know, our, we, our village foreman's office is in it and it's not compliant. Boy Scouts have been using it. It's not compliant. Food shelf, not compliant. I mean, this is all new, not new news to anyone. It's, uh, it, it needs more than a ramp and, you know, to get hung up on that aspect. I, I think that it should have a ramp and it should have always had one, but is there, is, is there a plan for this building? Cause it's not, it's not safe. It's not a safe building. It's not a safe building to have food in. It's not a safe building to have children in. And, uh, you know, this, this brought it to my attention and I don't want to throw anyone under the bus or anything. Obviously it's what we have and we've used it and it's great for the, the food shelf that, that they have a, a space, they need a space. But I think that as a town and a community, we can do better than this. And uh, I don't think the conversation should end with a ramp. You know, I, I think we shouldn't be asking for a little here. We should be asking for a whole lot more of this space. You know, the ramp is sort of one piece of what we need to be. There needs to be a vision here. You know, it, it, it's, it's a silly Band-Aid. It's hardly a Band-Aid, but yeah, that's yeah. all I got. Thank you, Brian. I, I, yeah. I appreciate that. And um, I, I have a lot to say about it. <laughs> I really agree with you. And it's, <laughs> This has been a, a particular issue that um, has been a concern of mine since I've joined the select board, frankly. Um, and it's, it's always been a challenge to get, again, town and village meshed up to have both of them have the same priorities at the same time to want to fund, um, to put the, the time and money into in creating a vision, a shared vision for the space and investing in it. Um, and of course, in these last, you know, what, five years or so, most of our capital building equipment or our, our building investments have been made into the municipal building itself, which has been a significant investment. So it's, it's also just a matter of, of limited funds. But I really agree with what you have to say, and I'll, I'll continue to, to push that point, and I, I hope you do too. Sorry, Mike, you had a point you, you wanted to make. Well, I'm just going to say exactly, you know, basically the same thing you did, uh, Brian. You're absolutely right. Uh, we've been kicking this can down the road for a long time, and uh, I've been on the board now for five years, and we were talking about it every year since I've been on the board. Uh, sometimes it seems like we're we're getting to the point where we're almost doing something, and then all of a sudden the, the bottom just drops right out of it. But you're absolutely right. And I think what you're driving at, unless we fix this building, we're just spending good money, uh, you know, in, into something bad. Uh, the whole thing needs to be fixed. And the ramp would be all part of the whole fix. So I, th I think, yeah, I think go ahead. Yeah, I think that, um it's at this point, it's non-compliant for so long. And it's not only that, but it's the neglect has gone on to the point of it's a hazard. You know, it, it's a, it's a health hazard and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just gotten, it, it's not something that's avoidable at this point. I'd be happy to volunteer my time to work with the board to come up with some sort of a plan. You know, I'm not that interested in this project, to be honest, as a contractor. I looked at it and I'm happy to give a bid because I know that there are three bids needed. But as of right now, I'm, you know, it's this, this is not where my, what my position is coming from. I'm not looking for work or anything like that. I, I'd be happy to help and maybe meet and go over the building more beyond this ramp, if that's something that's of value. Oh, that'd be a lot of value, and I appreciate that. Okay. Yep, me too. And yet, the the um, discussion, the the larger vision, is something that I agree we need to 
we need to um, continue, continue to focus on the, the um, agenda item tonight is about a ramp. So right. um, we should get a ramp. All right, hold on. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Greg. <clears throat> Have we ever done a lead and asbestos survey of this building? I don't believe so. Yeah. Uh, not well, a lot. Yeah. That might be a place to start so you know what you're getting into. If you do decide to redo this building, if, you know, anytime you start tearing into something with lead or asbestos, things can get pretty expensive. So it's a thought. I don't know. You know, uh, I don't think I'd spend a whole bunch of money uh, until I know uh, what kind of toxins I'm working with. You're good. Thanks. Scott, welcome. Hey, everybody. Um, I wanted to answer a question that got asked a little bit earlier. So uh, for a door, for the width, it's 32 inches as long as the door swings open at 90 degrees fully. Um, but the range is usually between 32 and 36 for ADA compliance. Um, as far as the health of the building, um, it's pre-1978, obviously. So lead laws do apply. And it's one of the reasons that the building has been neglected. Um, as far as my contact with the issue, being a trustee, it's one of the reasons why the building's neglected because you need a lead certified contractor to um, deal with the building because it's got lead paint on it. So one of the reasons it's not painted hasn't never been taken care of as long as I can remember um, just because of the cost of a lead contractor to come in to do proper abatement and painting. There's little things you can do to get around those laws, um, which makes me really nervous. But uh, anyway, yeah, lead paint, count on it. And for the asbestos um, content, I'm not really clear if that has ever happened. I know the Lamoille County Planning Commission was offering to do a site assessment to do an overall sort of quick check of the building. Um, we actually had engineers lined up that we were thinking about having a, a complete building review that were not within anybody's budget, whether it be the town and or the village. Um, so we were asking, and I'm not sure where this stands at this point, um, we were asking for a quicker review on things that are tangible, that are easy, like ADA compliance, you know, wiring, just an overall review of the building, almost like if you would be selling it, where you would have an estimator come in to do a tick list. Um, obviously, the building has looks like it has good bones, staring at it from the outside, but um, it needs work um, for sure. But yeah, lead paint, count on it. It's one of the reasons that it's in the shape that it's in now. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. So let's get a, a feeling from the board. Um, Dorgan is requesting um, a ramp. Um, it sounds like the specifics, and we don't have a specific quote in front of us right now, and she'll be building that. Are we interested in going forward with having to go forward with um, investigating putting a ramp on or not? Yeah, do we need a motion for her to do the to get um, estimates or can she just get the estimates and bring them back? Well, um, I think that she can get the estimates and bring them back, but if there are answers gonna be, no, I'll get no that. that we should probably give her a heads up to save her the time. Um, I mm -hmm. personally, I think it would be a very, very good thing to do to, to put a ramp on the building to help the food shelf. Um, uh, that's me, but I'm one of five here, so. No, I agree. We should be offering, it's a food shelf. It should be open to everyone. Yeah, I would agree as well. I, I think they need a ramp to get in. As long as it's gonna be used uh, for the food shelf, they need access. And in the big scheme of things, for what it's gonna cost us to really fix that building up, it's gonna be an investment of 3,000 is, it's just a drop in the bucket. 
Anybody disagree? Okay. Dorgan, that's the, that's the best answer we have for you at the moment. Thank you very much for getting, for, for doing the legwork on it. Um, I know it's, it's not typically the tenant's responsibility to, to go out and do that sort of work, but um, this is an unusual situation. So thank you. And I, hopefully this, this other request that you have is fairly simple to remove that, that cupboard. It's a, a, a little corner cupboard with a, as you can see, it's a counter um, and a, a cupboard underneath it. And uh, we, the, the food shelf really needs um, more refrigerator space. We're getting a lot of great produce, especially in the summer and the fall, and we have no cold space to put it in. So it goes, uh, wilts very quickly. Um, and we got a grant to um, buy a refrigerator with a glass front. So someday when, when people can come in, they can see what's in it and select what they'd like. So, and this is really the only space um, left where we could put a refrigerator um, and it's a cupboard we, we don't use. So, and I haven't gotten any estimates as to what it would cost. Um, I, uh, so I just wanted permission since you own the building before we start tearing things up or getting estimates or whatever. And you have an you outlet? Pay Yes, have, uh, it, in that little um, pantry around the corner from it, there obviously was a washer dryer because it's got a, a, a plum, it's plumbed for a washer. And there is a, um, a three prong plug there. And the refrigerator is looking at it is a standard um, 115 volts or something. So it seemed like that was gonna work. Um, um, but so, and we would, the food shelf would pay for the removal of this cupboard. I understand the, the trustees have already approved this. Is that correct? Yeah. I make a motion authorizing the food shelf to remove that shelf and cupboard. Motion to second. This is from Beth, did you second that? Yep. Yes. Motion and a second. Uh, discussion. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Um, welcome to make that out, Dorgan. Um, oh, are you, is, is Dorgan going to get three quotes for that work as well? I mean, we just approved removing it. Um, but the rework of electrical, it's extremely tricky when you start talking the National Electric Code. Oh, I have a me. plug for it. We we don't need to do anything electrical. Okay. And the food shelf is paying for it, so you know. I suppose I, I what I would probably do is when I'm talking to these carpenters about the ramp bid, say, what would you charge the food shelf to remove this? And but I, I hope it's a fairly inexpensive removal. Scott has a question or a comment. Yeah, thanks. Um, just a, a, a quick reminder. Um, I missed it on the trustee call um, on the removal of the counter um, and where the electric would come from. You're not allowed under the electrical code to run a cord through a door. Um, so you'd have to work on that. Does that make sense? And that's also an OSHA gig thing too. You can't run a, an extension cord or an outlet cord through a doorway um, with a door that closes. Just a heads up. I have a door that closes. Yeah. There's no door on that um, entryway. You still may want to check because it goes through okay. a doorway. Yeah. Just, yep. just a okay. heads up. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you, Dorothy. Very much. Um, oh, sorry, I may have muted you a little bit too early, Dorgan. Sorry. Okay. So moving on, are we on to the library now? Uh, let me take a quick look at our packet. But yes, we're on the library now. 
So review and discuss a memorandum of understanding with Johnson Public Library. This is a document that the library has been working on and has submitted to us for um, either agreeing to or amending. Beth has her hand up. Go ahead, Beth. I just had to mute myself. Sorry, I just had to uh, yeah, mute I myself bet. for a minute, so. Okay. Um, do we want to start with, I see Jess Bickford is here. She's the chair of our library trustee board. Should we start with an introduction from Jess? Yeah, I think that'll be really helpful if you're prepared, Jess. Great. Hey, Jess. Yeah, and there's a couple others on the call with me. There's Jasmine and there's Jean from the library. So they may have additions, but um, basically um, this is a brand new document. The library has never had a MOU with the town and village. Um, but it's just come up several times over the years of, you know, where does this project fall? You know, uh, there was a backup of septic into the basement at one point and it's, you know, so we ended up just calling rotor rooter, but it's like, it was something that was at the street side. There was a line coming in. Um, there's been a sinkhole in the ba backyard and it was who, whose responsibility is this? Um, so really just wanting to clarify that, you know, also included in this document are our flood uh, cleanup procedures and, and, you know, mitigation. And we've been doing a lot of work to mitigate uh, flood impact, um, but really just wanting to put it in writing. Uh, so there is a clear, clear understanding going forward. And this right now is a draft. So there may be changes. There's a couple things highlighted um, that we want to try to figure out before it gets signed. So it's... it's it might not get approved tonight, but um, wanted the discussion to start happening, so. Great. Eric. Yeah, I just want to uh, say a few things on it. Um, first, it's, uh, there is precedent with us having memorandums with uh, like the village trustees on sh uh, what were shared employees and some of the work they do in the office, as well as with the historical society. I just want to make sure that the library is aware, and, and this was something we made as a, really made as a point to the historical society, that any agreement this board makes today will not uh, be held to a future board. A future board could honor it or could could not. That's uh, something we do not have the authority to hold any future board. Uh, so as long as you understand that. And the other item was uh, the village really has no responsibility for or to the library. That is a town owned building, okay. uh, town owned property. As far as any sewage or water okay. issues, that's nothing more than you as a customer have certain rights or you know, relationships with the village, no, no different than any other person on railroad street or anywhere else. And uh, thirdly, I had noticed at the end uh, where emergency management shall provide certain resources, uh, yada, yada, during a flood event. And um, that really needs to be changed to May, uh, depending on the situation and what's going on, the resources may not be available and there is a, a certain priority that we always look at. And first is life and limb. And that's where all resources would go to if there was anybody's you know, life or limb in danger. Second priority is municipal owned property and infrastructure. And that is where the library would fall in. So you're certainly within the second priority. Um, and then follow on priority would be any residential property that we could help out with. But, uh, you know, just those are some points that I saw that stuck out at me. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Jasmine, hi. There you go, Jasmine. Hi, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, Eric, I, I wanted to ask a follow up question. You said that you have some um, understand uh, memorandums of understanding with the historical society and that they could change at any point based on the change of the of the board and I'm just wondering um, what kind of like is there a routine follow-up like is there a um, year annually or do they come to you every now and then with an updated version if the board changes you know 
come town meeting day and there's a change of do you get yeah, am that, i am i making no, any that, sense? Yeah. <laughs> that's a a really good question um and to your point with the historical society that memorandum of understanding was built or set up with a prior board the current board would not need to honor it uh, with that said it does hold a lot of weight that if there is an agreement like that a future board i would expect would yield a certain amount of uh, influence or or uh, what the report uh, the understanding was and, and what was behind it uh, but it doesn't have to that's that's a cautionary thing i want to state what you just brought up about an annual uh Reevaluation is ironically something I and Brian talked about today after the village's annual meeting and they have a new board sit, sitting there. That would be the time that we redo our uh, memorandum with the village and it probably should be on an annual cadence and then that way it's the only way it'd be held in effect. But okay. yeah, those are good questions, very valid. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Jess, go ahead. You know, and part of one of the things that's mentioned in here is kind of an annual review of the facility just to make sure that, you know, if there's any upcoming projects that it's on the town's horizon. So um, it would make sense that, you know, maybe after that's done that we just, you know, shortly after town meeting, just re-up this every year um, because, you know, the library trustees change as well, so. Yep, true. Good points. So how do we want to proceed with this document? It, do we, I'm sensing we don't want to pick through this tonight and, and make those fine changes. Um, do we want to um, have Brian follow up? Do we want to have a couple of board members of our board members meet with, with trustees to, to hash out some of the specifics? I would really like to understand where this lies in priority for the board um, against all the other projects that the board has going on. Um, I understand the need for this and I respect and understand the request from the trustees. Um, but I also know there's, there's other similar things that are on the list of to-dos for both Brian and the board. And I just wanna make sure that we're picking up uh, things in order of either importance or, um, you know, importance meaning there's an urgency or there's a significant impact or there's a deadline we're trying to hit um, against things like um, other like items that we have on the list. And where does this fall against those other like items that may be on the back burner right now? Um, so I'm very interested in thoughts on, per, on uh, priority of this against other things. I'm feeling we're gonna hear that from you a lot in the future. You're gonna hear that from me a lot. <laughs> I think it's a valid point. I, I, would, the, I know that it has been um, a significant issue for the library trustees in, in recent years um, and probably even beyond recent years. And I, and I, I know a considerable, a considerable amount of work has gone into creating this document. So I would, I would hate to table it for too long, um, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. And the other, I mean, the other question I have around this too is, um, I, Jessica, you brought up specifically like your concerns about emergency issues that um, clearly are very taxing for everyone involved. And maybe that's the most urgent item and maybe that's the first step, like, can we break this into smaller chunks of work so that it isn't a, we need to cover all aspects, but instead we have a high urgency foundational item and we build off that. Um, you know, there's, there's been times, I'm sorry, I didn't get acknowledged again. <laughs> May I speak? Okay, Absolutely. you know, there's been times you know, our, our librarians who honestly that's not in their job description you know they're, they're, they protect the library but that's that's you know that they've been down like you know squeegeeing water and like you know so it's just having that clear you know flood plan for the library 
really is crucial. You know, f fortunately this year it doesn't look like we have an ice jam, um, but floods can come up fast. You know, the Halloween flood didn't have an ice jam. So, um, you know, the library is one of those buildings that is routinely um, kind of in harm's way. So just having a really clear plan on that, um, you know, we've done some steps that we can at the library to make it better, but, you know, even something as simple as, as you know, sandbags, it, it really shouldn't be, you know, Jean and, and Steve volunteering to be the ones getting them out there. So, you know, just having a, a clear plan and, and knowing where we fit into the town's plan um, would be super helpful. And thank you, Jean and Steve, for all the times that you've, you've gone above and beyond related to floods. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So where do we want to take this uh, MOU proposal from here? I, I would suggest maybe we ask Brian to uh, work with the, the library trustees cleaning it up. Because I know it, did, it does need to have references to the village removed and there would be no agreement with the village other than as a customer. Yep. Uh, and the, the library has done a great job of putting a lot of work into this. So I don't think that this is uh, going to be too taxing of my time thanks to the work that they've contributed to this. Sounds like a good direction. Uh, Kyle, um, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Nat. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, to just remind everybody, um, and I know, I know most of you know, but it's just always good to hear that the library, the public library is one of our greatest assets, I think, in this town. And, um, and it's one that's utilized by almost everybody, all walks of life in this community. And so I, I understand, Beth, what you're saying about um, sticking with the priorities already at hand, but, but I do think that this is, this is something that's been, um, been kind of on the list for a while and, and needs, to be, needs to be honored soon because it is something that I think is um, uh, sometimes not, um, an unsung hero of our town is the public library. So I think, yeah, I, I think it, it does deserve um, the time and, and the action in the near future. So thank you, um, Jessica and the trustees for all that you do. It's just, it's a huge, huge undertaking. And, um, and thank you to the board for, um, yeah, just recognizing it and, and honoring the library for, for what it really is, which is a, an amazing asset to our town. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, it sounds like what, where we're landing is for, for Brian and, and Jessica and Jasmine. Um, uh, Jasmine, you're the build, you're the like facilities person on the board, correct? <laughs> yes. Um, so if the three of you could get together and I'd be happy to help with that too. If, uh, if you want some help, I, I I would, uh, yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, our signs for the Arboretum. Sure. Sue, Sue Lovering's cat is here and so is Sue Lovering. So welcome, Sue. Um, and I don't know if, if Sue or Brian, you wanna talk to, uh, Introduce this. So uh, while Sue finds the, the unmute, uh, a little background, the, the Arboretum project, as I understand, is going very well. Uh, the stage that they're at right now is uh, they want some guidance on size, location, uh, just some guidelines. So while they're working on uh, the design and installation of the signs, uh, they know they're kind of with our blessing. And Sue, if you want to add to that. Okay, thank you. Um, we originally had hoped to have a sign uh, either over or under the uh, Duba Field sign there on the telephone pole. The village said no. In fact, they said they didn't know there was a sign on that telephone pole and they didn't want that one on there either. 
So they suggested, first off, throwing it back in your lap, and secondly, uh, putting a separate sign round about that area in that green space, which they are going to rip apart, and they figured we wouldn't be putting a sign there until probably September. Uh, and that works because it's right across from the entrance to the Arboretum. Uh, the other place we'd eventually like a sign is right on the entrance um, to the eventual uh, easement that we're trying to get from the old town property that goes along the river so we could have another Arboretum entrance on that walking path along the river. And we have permission from everybody but the studio center and they haven't met all this year. Uh, they haven't given us a date to talk about it. It's, it's all on hold for that. But they indicated last year when we did talk about it in January that they would probably go along with that. That would be a second sign. We're also hoping to eventually have a sign on the wayfaring signs on Main Street. Mm. So my question is, uh, how do we go about this? So uh, procedurally, the wayfaring sign will be a request to uh, the state to add it. Uh, it. They're usually pretty good about that. Uh, we had to make a change to it for NVU. They were supportive of, um, so I don't think we'll have to make a, a request when we're ready for, for that, but I, I don't anticipate any challenges. Um, I'm surprised that the village didn't know about the sign for Duba Field. Um, I don't know how long that's been installed, but that wasn't new. Long enough that it's rusty. Yeah. Uh, it's fairly recent. It's been within 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, it... and as far as Pearl Street, that's a town highway. We can just put our own signpost in and then you could put whatever sign you wanted on it. Yeah, my only concern there is that the access for that, we really want it right across from the access because it's not easy as, to spot. Right. Uh, so we want it to be as clear as possible that you go right through here in order to get back to the, the field and the Arboretum because, uh, yeah, we don't want to make that any more confusing than it already is. No, and I and I think that nine out of 10 people in town have never seen that Duba Field sign because everybody is surprised that it's there. Yeah. And the sign is actually 18 by 24 inches and it comes across like a polka dot. So we're thinking of at least a 24 by 36 sign. And my, I wonder too, can we put one on the... Um, um, Bill Perkins's side there in the right of way, right at the entrance to the. Right I think that's probably a good idea. Is putting one. Uh, yeah, maybe even two to define like a uh, a gateway of you know that the path is between these two signs. Right. Something like I, that. I think there's more value in that having the sign on the other side of the street because a lot of people don't even you, you don't recognize it as a public right of way through somebody's yard like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's uh, we're gonna have to read the was it this uniform code on uniform municipal traffic control devices. A couple thousand page book on signs. We'll leave that one to you, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everything is, turns into such a complicated affair. It's a page turner. So, does anyone on the board have any re reservations about the signs going up? It sounds like can we just have um, Sue and Brian and Hugh work together to? properly installed signs that comply with the MU and the C regulations. So moved. Do we need a motion? Uh, we have a motion. I'll second that. We have a motion and we have a second. Do we have any discussion? Sue, is that clear enough? Does that? 
yep. get you what you need. Uh, yeah, the only other question I'd have is um, pays for it. Is what? Who pays for it? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm that kind of here. Sorry. Uh, let me rephrase that. <laughs> I, I understand the question. Um, thank you. We will. I will address that. Kyle, you have a uh, some input. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a price on what it costs to print the signs and. I well, we have, some, we have some grant money to print the signs and we have found somebody who will give us a discount on it. So I think we're okay on the signs, but it would be the poles and installing it and all of that. Oh, okay. We can, I think the town will, should be able to work with you on that. Okay, yeah, uh, we've got the equipment to place a sign pretty quickly and easily. Okay. Kyle, go ahead, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, Sue, this is awesome. Um, I was curious what you're thinking about in terms of the aesthetic of the signs. Is there a, a design? Is there a logo? Is there, I'm just, just curious. Um, we have a logo that was on the uh, tree board annual report page in the um, town report. Oh yeah. Um, we think it's quite classy and uh, God knows we worked on it for months, but <laughs> so we're just thinking that and uh, Johnson Arboretum, something pretty simple and uh, probably a white background because the lesson we're taking from that Duba Field sign is that um, it just doesn't stand out. Mm -hmm. um, so nothing garish. We want to keep it low key and classy looking. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. no, uh, the one on, uh, on Route 15 will have to follow the It'll look like the other sign, wayfinding signs on Route 15. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the one we really get some choices about is the one for the the, the field itself. But yeah, uh, we'll work on that. We'll figure out what sizes are allowed, and then uh, uh, proceed from there. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Sue. Okay, thank you. Moving on to review and approve administration administrative assistant job description. And this is... Um, this is... Uh, the job currently held by Ann Mullins. Ann is retiring soon. And uh, we have, uh, we're looking for a, um, a replacement for Ann. Uh, and I'm, this hasn't been updated in, I think that the last version that was in your packet was approved uh, 2010 or so. Uh, so this hasn't been updated in about 10 years, a little more. Um, so we've got a couple updates that we're interested in making to this. Uh, so I've got kind of my first crack at it uh, that you received outside of your packet and I will share my screen. It's a lot to have to read all at once, but I've highlighted the substantive changes that I've made. Um, one of the things I am thinking that we can, that'll be of service to both the town and the village uh, is charging this position with um, dealing with our kind of the building access, maintenance oversight. So, um, you know, like right now I end up scheduling our HVAC service appointments. Um, Rosemary hands out keys and manages who has keys if somebody needs special access to the, the building or not. And that's been greatly reduced currently, but it's, you know, it's things that really don't need our attention, could very easily be handled by uh, like this level, an administrative assistant kind of position. Um, so I'd like to turn those duties over to it. I 
don't think that these are going to add an unreasonable amount of overhead to the position. Um, sometimes they're going to be a little bit busier than others, but even at its busiest, it's not that bad. Um, but it, it'll, I think it'll be useful for both the town and the village. We haven't brought this to the village trustees yet, but yeah, I, I think the benefit to this will be spread pretty evenly across both. Maybe a little uh, history lesson here for Beth and Eben's benefit. Uh, for many number of years, we've had employees in the office that were shared employees, uh, town and village, and a certain percentage of their pay salary was uh, paid by each of the entities, and it depended on their workload and where most of their workload uh, was focused, whether it was on town side or village side. And uh, it had, at one time when we initially set it up, we had quite a few shared employees. It has come down to the point where we had uh, literally two. And so we, and one does pr predominantly uh, village work and the other one does predominantly town work. We decided uh, to make them town only and village only employees. And that's why the, uh, the job description refers to a lot of village as well as town uh, functions because this position would be doing some village work still. However, uh, that is why we have that memorandum of understanding with the village is to uh, identify that amount of work and how much uh, compensation goes back and forth between the town and village. And that's why we're at where we are today. And it's, uh, it's a new position that the town would be filling, I would suggest we provide the same courtesy to the village that the village provided to us. In the interviewing process, uh, Brian and I participated uh, only in the interviewing and some suggestions to the village. And it's actually the village trustees that hired that position. Um, I would suggest we would offer that same uh, uh, courtesy to the village to participate in our hiring for this job position. I'm going to unmute for Rosemary if she has any additional comments about the. <coughs> Brian, you can delete any reference to the Johnson School District. Okay, that was the, the last question I was going to ask. Um, is that we do a lot less for the school district than we used to. And uh, there is no Johnson School District. It, it dissipated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, there, yeah, that's, uh, I guess, the, the most important thing. There is no Johnson School District at all. And with the Unified School District, we do a lot less for them. Um, Brian Shane. Yeah, uh, I'll just straight up delete school district. The other, I mean, I just have some questions around um, what's gonna draw in good candidates if they read this job description that keeps the description accurate, um, but also uses language that is closer to what you see in lots of jobs today. Um, for example, I don't know if the, um, I understand the job is called a clerk, um, but I don't see the term clerk used very often, uh, for example. Um, and then there's um, a number of, a lot of bullets that talk about processing. And I just think you could bulk those together and make the job description more readable um, and maybe compact it a little bit. Um, so just some general like items like that. And then, I, I mean, <laughs> it's great if you really enjoy your, your job, for example, but when I read enjoy serving the public, like I understand the intent behind that. Um, I don't know, it just made me chuckle, I guess a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, I have feedback on the, the language primarily. All right. Um, 
Yeah, I think that would be maybe something we don't want to get into in the meeting, but uh, I think we could definitely punch this up some more and I would appreciate your assistance with that. Yeah, yeah. happy to help. That'd be great to uh, Beth, you'd be helping on that. I've got a few, uh, a couple of things. I'm wondering how the job has actually changed since, or how we may have want, want it to change since uh, Anne was hired. Um, I, I believe that we added something to her job responsibilities to do with GIS mapping. She is uh, now responsible for providing uh, the updates to our GIS mapping service. So when we get um, map updates from surveyors, she, trans she uh, helps transfer those on and get those uploaded to the uh, GIS system. So if you look up land records, um, you know, she's helping make those, make and keep those up to date. So I'm wondering if, if that needs to be added to this. Um, also, I think at, at various points we've talked about the need for um, a social media person, someone just to keep the Facebook fresh and whatever other social media we have out there that might be able to be helpful. Um, and yeah. also in, in a similar vein, I don't know if this would be appropriate, but having someone who has a little bit of a background in um, building websites, and it doesn't have to be somebody who has like a career in it, but somebody who has knowledge about it that might be able to provide some in-house assistance from time to time um, might be really helpful as well. Administering as opposed to building is what you're suggesting at? I think you're right. Yes, yes. Yeah. Administering. I, I, we would specifically want somebody who's familiar with WordPress. Um, because that is how our website is hosted. And, uh, you know, personally, that's a big holdup for me is I know a decent amount about websites. I know next to nothing about WordPress. Um, so if it's not an HTML problem or something else, then I, I'm out of luck. So under preferred qualifications, knowledge of you know, did you say word? WordPress. I mean, WordPress is a is a. It's a particular hosting yeah. software suite. Right, I'm just saying, if a candidate who has that knowledge would uh, have an advantage, and if somewhere how we could put that into the job description, that would be. Yeah. I mean, WordPress is a pretty old technology too. Just don't <laughs> say that out loud. So. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so and maybe we, you know, maybe we want to migrate to something else. I don't, I don't know, but I'm just throwing out the idea that maybe this position could be helpful in that function. Yeah, we did. I did add, uh, in addition to the facilities oversight, uh, oversight for the IT uh, services as well. Uh, and being kind of a point of contact for our IT team. Okay. Um, okay. And so I think that e extending that feature of the job a little bit will, will be good and kind of keeping with our, uh, you know, that this still distributes the needs between the town and the village, that they, they need that just as well as we do and, right. and to use those services just as often as we do. So, yeah, um, so we want to expand the, the kind of, it's not an IT position, but maybe expand it a little bit on uh, what related and kind of oversight duties the position has. I um, think so. Um, kind of are you talking, when you say, I, sorry, when you say IT support, are you talking about desktop support or are you talking about, like, that is a really big term? We, we contract with the tech group to be our IT service provider. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's 
you know, they are our IT service provider, but occasionally they have questions for us uh, about one thing and another. And right now I'm, I'm their point of contact. So they're, they're calling me about things that sometimes I'm really glad I'm involved and other times uh, it like anybody could have answered that. And uh, yeah, it would be great to have somebody like at this level be the, the point of contact. Much like the maintenance, like if it rises to a certain level, yeah, we want, you know, a closer eye on it, but routine stuff would be great if we could have it taken care of. Uh, right. Right. I do just have one other thing that is the, if I may, sorry. You may. Um, which is the external and internal applicants box at the very bottom. Um, um, that, uh, that I don't think fully encompasses all of the protections that the town should state. Um, we should be stating um, a wider range of just people with disabilities, like we're an inclusive. We, we have some more modern language on that that we can update yeah, thank that. You. Okay. And I think that's a good catch breath that we shouldn't just assume what we used to have on this is good enough. Right. I, what I'm sensing is that we're headed into a direction of Beth and Brian working together to, to punch this up and bring it back to the board. Is that more or less? Um, and Kyle has, a, has some input. Go ahead, Kyle. Thank you. And yeah, Nat, you, you read you read my mind on the social media and um, I guess I would call it website updating support, um, not only to take some of the, the pressure um, and duties off of you, Brian, but also just for, for our volunteers um, on our committees, because I know that's been Kind of a consistent frustration is you know getting agendas and meeting minutes up and and getting you know communications out to the greater public so um if this position could could encompass some or all of that i think that would just take a huge yeah kind of um weight off of brian's shoulders and also off our off our volunteers who who i know um we value very much so Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And Eric, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to add, you know, obviously, Beth and uh, Brian, if you're going to uh, really dig into this and uh, you'd be looping in Rosemary, but probably uh, at some level for the village uh, input should have Meredith looped in as well. I, I think that would be kind of appropriate going forward is. Uh, you know, to extend the invitation to Meredith to, to join us in these discussions. Yeah. Good point. And obviously we have a somewhat of a deadline. Do we know when we need to post this by? Uh, we have put out a hiring ad. Rosemary, have we gotten any inquiries about that? Okay, Not so, yet. Yeah. So, so we've we started to run with that and we're trying to update the job description uh kind of behind the scenes gotcha yeah and it's going to be here to about the middle of may okay. anything Do you else see value in having any overlap it could be some value in it yes okay okay anything else on this topic you got what you need, Brian, I think. I think so. Very good. Thank you. Um, next up, we have a proposed uh, remote county plan, Lamoille County Planning Commission bylaw change. I don't see anyone from LCPC here, but maybe Brian can fill us in. Uh, basically, this allows 
this improves the way that LCPC can enter enter into intermunicipal contracts. All oh, right. Um, it is a public comment period on the bylaw change uh, at their upcoming meeting. Um, and do we want the does the board want to have any comments on this? Um, you know, if, if we're fine with them just making changes to their bylaws and we don't want to get into it, we don't need a, a whole lot of detail. Not really. What are we going to do about it anyway? It's their organization. And well, this, benefit, this provides benefit to them uh, at little to no cost to us. But broadly speaking, we do want to have an oversight of changes like this they make because it it could impact us, you know, with a different change, but this I, th I think is beneficial to us. Yeah, if there was ever a intermunicipal agreement for something in the future, well, this would allow them to be able to administrate it for those uh, agreed municipalities. And, and an example, although I don't expect they would do it, would be uh, if we decided to no longer contract with the sheriff for police service, and we decided to have an intermunicipal agreement between Hyde Park, Woolcott, and Johnson, there is would be a role for somebody like LCPC to manage that for us. That type of scenarios. And as of this time, there is no plan for anything from LCPC. It was just new authorization that was given to them by the state and they need to change their bylaws so that they're even able to do it. And that's what they're looking for. Did, does this come out of, do you know, does this come out of the anticipated, the anticipated work for the uh, CUDs, the internet? I don't, I don't think so. That was a separate authorized by statute district. Okay. Yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing. It, I think it's it could be related, but I don't think that it. Uh, I'm pretty confident that that was not the purpose of this change. Okay. Okay. Um, I yeah, Great. I know that our representatives, uh, Duncan Hastings and Howard Romero, are going to be in favor of this and they're going to appear, appear at the annual meeting. Um, I don't know if I'm going to attend the annual meeting or not at this point, but I'd like to. Um, and Eric, I think you were in the same boat of... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to plan on it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And is that um, the annual meeting and the Marvin Awards are presented? That's the same night, correct? Typically, typically yes okay. and have we been asked for any nominations for the marvin award we i think we were we have been uh i don't recall anything coming across but no there was a little bit of confusion about that but yeah we got the marvin awards we got the marvin awards on town meeting day that was it Um, and when, when's the deadline to make nominations? I'm looking that up right now. What do you mean we got that on town meeting day when you say that? Like that's not a request. An you... email on town meeting day. Uh, that's just the date of the email that has the Marvin Awards. Uh, okay. That is, uh, the deadline is April 30th. So, okay, so we have that. Thank you for bringing that up, Nat. Um, yeah, the, the Marvin Awards are, if I can kind of diverge a little bit to give some background on the Marvin Awards. Yes, please. Um, Marvin Awards are a pair of awards for community service. Uh, it is a project design and a uh, person uh, who provides community service are the two areas for a nomination. Um, we've had a number of people and projects recognized in the past. The 
Studio Center has won one before the college. NVU has won one before. Um, we have nominated Jenna's Promise in the past uh, without success because at the time they, uh, the Marvin Awards would like to see kind of completed projects. Uh, so our, our application was not particularly strong when we nominated Jenna's Promise last year. Um, but yeah, uh, we should give some thought to people we people in places we might like to nominate from Johnson this year. It's typically typically a project, such as a Main Street project or a construction or something. And uh, secondly, it's uh, typically a uh, an individual. I believe uh, our own Eric Osgood was a uh, recent recipient. Thank you. So anyway, so the board can um, make nominations. I think any individual can make a nomination, but it holds particular weight if the select board agrees to um, a particular nomination, somebody or something in the community that's, that's deserving. So maybe we can put that on uh, agenda in, a month, in two, two to four weeks. Yeah, uh, let's do that. And I'll send out a list of uh, past recipients also. Cool, thanks. I, I have one suggestion for potentially for an individual. Uh, he's a former member of LCPC, served on it for probably a couple of decades. He served on our Johnson Planning Commission for, in fact, he was a founding member of the Planning Commission in Johnson and was its chair for about 20 years. And then he was served on the select board for, I'm uh, not sure, eight, nine years, somewhere in that range. And he recently got done and that would be Doug Moldy. Good suggestion, very good suggestion. I think he'd be a very strong candidate. It's funny, we always do this in the open, you know, it probably should be an email sent to Brian and. So it could be some kind of a surprise to these recipients, you know. If anybody follows the meetings, they're going to know they've been nominated. It's too they bad. They've that... won, though. I, I think we've managed to surprise everybody so far, though. Uh, well, and nobody on this Zoom meeting will let Doug know. Yeah, <laughs> that's really, really funny. All he has to do is just go back and watch it. All right, well, let's let's keep that on the agenda for a future meeting. Um, yeah. Do you have, I think you have what you need for the bylaw change for LCP? Yeah, uh, basically we're, we're supporting it, but we're not sending specific comments or, or anything along. Uh, it's kind of um, what I'm taking from this and, and I think that's appropriate. So we had, um, before we go into executive session, we had a request uh, to address a beautification committee appointment. Do we still want to do that tonight? Uh, they've had a vacancy for quite a while. And Kyle did make it known to us at our last meeting that uh, they had a person that they would like appointed. That's the only person that's interested? Yeah, that's it. We've only received the one application. How long has it been out there? For a while. It, it's been a long time. Uh, okay. That, that committee was, for a very short time, it was fully staffed up, and then a bunch of people quit, and uh, we haven't had a full committee since. Okay. Who, who was the candidate? It is uh, Jonah Keefe. Keefe, K. K E E F E. That was for Donna. Um, what's the board's pleasure? I make a motion we uh, uh, put Joni Keefe on the beautification committee. Is that Jonah? Jonah. I believe it's pronounced Jonah. J O H N A. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? That was a second? Yep. 
from Evan. Okay, uh, discussion from the board. Um, Shane, uh, go ahead, uh, what's up? Uh, yes, thanks, Matt. Just for the record, it is Jonna, um, and she's a good friend of mine and would be a wonderful addition to the commission. Jonna. Jonna, good, yes. I appreciate that. Thanks for correcting us there. Yeah, thank you, Shane. Any other uh, comment? Very good. Uh, all in favor, uh, signify it by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Great. And before we go into executive session, I did want to say too, um, I don't see her now. Oh, there she is. Uh, what a, I was really pleased to see that newspaper article about Donna Griffiths in the newspaper this past week in the News and Citizen. I, I thought it was really good. And uh, I think she really provides a, a really great service for the community. So thanks, Donna. I'm glad that uh, that worked out that way. Um, next on the agenda is, oh, Kyle, go ahead. Sorry, I, I might have jumped the gun there, Nat. Um, I, I just had something under other business. Um, okay, go ahead. When you get there. I, I'm, okay. We're about to go into executive session. Okay, so. that's what I thought. Okay, okay, great, thank you. Um, thank you for appointing Jana. Yeah, she she came to our last beautification committee meeting with uh, great spirit. So I think she'll, she'll, be, she'll be awesome. Um, I just wanted to, to bring up in public session here that I did send the board as well as the trustees and several other community leaders an email with the Zoom link to um, Susanna Davis's um, uh, lecture that she did recently at NVU and um, with sort of a action item request that the board um, carve out some time to to watch it together as a board and and have a a discussion um, afterwards. I just felt like it was such a eye opening, moving um, lecture that really spoke uh, directly to municipalities, um, communities, um, sheriff's departments, um, education. I mean, just just a, a lot of what. Um, the select board deals with. So I, I think it would be really a valuable, um, a valuable thing to do and time, time well spent. So I was just gonna, I didn't, I didn't get any responses from anybody on the board. Um, I did from some other leaders that, that are committed to watching it with their committees. Um, so I just wanted to bring this up again in public session. Thanks. Thank you, Kyle. And I did watch that. It, it's, uh, it's very good. I encourage anybody to 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 watch it it's it's out there on youtube um any comments from the board on that suggestion i also watched it and i shared it with our equity and inclusion um committee at work okay um next on the uh the agenda executive session to discuss potential purchase of a new gravel pit. I need a motion to go into executive session. We have to do the one VSA 313A1. It's, so. it's best if we do, it's not a, uh, you know, the guideline for using executive session is that the more description we can provide in public session, the better served we would be if anybody ever challenged us as to whether we should have used executive session or not. Okay. I motion that we enter into executive session to discuss the purchase of a new gravel pit um, as allowed by 1 VSA 313A1. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Very good. Motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, Brian, go ahead. I, I would propose an amendment to invite uh, myself and Hugh into the executive session. Evan, is that a friendly amendment? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have something else you wanted to say? No. Okay. Uh, Mike, you had the second on that. Is that a friendly amendment? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and all those in favor, sit by face saying aye. 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 Opposed? OK, 
Okay, we're going into executive session. We will come out. I don't anticipate there will be any action on the other end, but folks are welcome to hang out in the waiting room and see us adjourn in 25 minutes or so. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. We stand in right. the session. Thank you.